What's up everyone, Zero over here and we are on patrol. Now this vlog is gonna be split up in two days. I'm out here in Alapada with Officer Fernandez. Hey, how you doing? Now I know you guys noticed that we have our mask on. That's because our chief wants to make sure that if we're within six feet of each other, it's mandatory to wear these, the N95s, to prevent the spread of germs, to prevent the spread of this virus and to try to keep the officers safe. Patrol has really, really, really changed, you know, during this pandemic. The calls aren't coming in the way they used to, which is a good thing. You know, people are staying home and staying safe and staying out of trouble. So we do like that. But it's a very strange time to be in for officers because we're used to coming out, you know, handling calls, you know, almost back to back. And it's almost like an eerie feeling to be out here, you know, seeing that the businesses are closed, nobody's really out, and you know, knowing that there's this looming pandemic, you know, you know, over our heads, you know, regardless, you know, the officers are still out here to do a job, but it definitely, the climate, you know, it does feel a little bit strange and eerie. And, uh, you know, we just want to thank everybody that is staying home during this time because we want to get through this pandemic as quick as possible. Now, all the officers do have laptops and they're able to check in from there and see what calls are holding. So, Officer Fernandez, right now, he's checking to see if there's anything going on and there's nothing. It's completely dead. Well, this is this uh, laptop right here. We, we be able to see uh, Alapada Net area, Windwood Net area, Overtown and a downtown and a now Edgewater. Uh, and right now, usually this is filled at least uh, around this time, about four or five calls. And right now there's nothing. So the key thing right now is just for the officers to be very, very visible during this crisis. We want to let the public know that we are out here. If there is any issue, if they happen to see us, think the flag is down, we're available and it also gives the officer an opportunity to do any type of proactive patrolling if they might see something suspicious like someone's trying to break into a business or a car you know since they're driving around if they catch that they can actually go ahead and address that and conduct their investigation with that being said we're just going to drive around for a little bit and just see what's happening Right now we got a call on a possibly our armed uh, person in the bank uh, 14th Daniel 36th Street. First call we've had since uh, we came on shift. Now going to a call like this, we're not sure how they're armed because it didn't specifically come out armed with a gun. They just said armed, so we're thinking all possible scenarios, officer safety, keep the distance, situational awareness. We want to make sure that we don't rush into something without assessing it very, very clearly. All right, Angel, so do me a favor. Tell us what we just saw. What was going on? Yeah, apparently, it's just a uh, employee, employer uh, dispute over uh, money. It's a civil matter. Nothing. Uh, we did not find anything criminal at the moment. And uh, we told him that if he has any issues with money, that to take him to court, use a uh, talk to a lawyer. We, uh, we did not find any evidence of a crime being committed. So both parties went their own separate ways. So luckily, guys, this call was not serious. There was no weapon in place. It was just a civil dispute. So you guys are actually gonna go ahead and continue what you're doing. I gotta go back to the office, handle some social media stuff, and we'll be back here in Alapata and Coconut Grove tomorrow with a follow-up for day two. See you then. All right, guys, we actually have a doctor in the house. I'm gonna let him go ahead and introduce himself, let you guys know what he's doing here to help during this crisis. How you guys doing? Uh, my first name is Abid, last name is Chowdhury. I'm an uh, emergency room physician. I'm also a uh, reserve police officer here at the city of Miami. 
Police Department. We're doing thermometer checks. We're doing uh, simple uh, questions. Basically, are you having a cough? Are you having shortness of breath? Those are the pre-screening exams. Now, if they uh, meet one of those criteria, they have to do a deeper screening. Cer certain individuals that actually uh, uh, meet one of the criteria, which could be chronic cough, and those that can entail a pre-existing condition, uh, for instance, asthma, bronchitis. Now that does not mean that you necessarily have the COVID-19 uh, virus. So essentially that is my role. I'm screening those individuals back into service. Uh, that way they can participate in helping uh, keep the city safe. Hey there, cool cats and kittens, Officer Williams here. As you guys may remember from the last vlog, I was assigned to the screening detail. Unfortunately, I came in contact uh, with someone that tested positive for the COVID-19. Uh, immediately, I was told to go to one of the city parks and get uh, tested. The test was very, very, very uncomfortable. Uh, they ended up sticking something down my nose, and not a pretty picture. Uh, so I was then told to go home and self-isolate and quarantine until I ended up getting my test results. A few days later, here we are today doing this video for you guys and my test results came back negative. Yay, I get to go back to work. So tomorrow I'll be uh, back at the academy. Uh, they assigned someone else to go ahead and do the screening details since I've been out, so I'll be teaching again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and be teaching traffic stops with pack 135 this week for the remainder of the week and criminal investigations with PAC 134 next week. So I'm extremely happy um, to, to be back at work. Thank you so much to everyone that has called, sent text messages, emails, smoke signals, um, everything really. Uh, thank you, special shout out to my sergeants, lieutenants uh, and major and all my other co-workers that also reached out as well, making sure that uh, myself and my family know we're, we're good and we get to do it. All right, guys, see you out there. No one is immune to this virus, essentially. You know your body best. If you feel you're sick, then please seek medical attention. So if you're having severe shortness of breath, if you're walking a few steps and you can't even uh, make it and you need to sit down and, and, and uh, uh, take, take some time to uh, breathe deeply, it's time to go see a medical doctor, all right? Very important. Uh, we don't want to inundate the, uh, the health system at this point, but we do not want you to be at home with severe symptoms uh, and eventually and then wind up at the hospital when it's too late. So please be vigilant, very important. All right, Doc, thank you so much for your help. I'm gonna let you get back to doing what you're doing and I'll catch you later. I appreciate it, Gio. Thank you, everyone stay safe uh, and have a great day. All right, guys, we're back here, day number two on patrol. But before we head to the Grove, first and foremost, I need to introduce you guys to the one and only Officer Delva. She's our PIO. Hi, everybody. I'm Officer Kiera Delva. I've been with the City of Miami Police Department for almost five years. In October, it'll be five years. And I've been assigned to the Public Information Office February, May, two years. So we're out here. We're going to be patrolling the City of Miami. We're going citywide, and we're excited. So if you guys notice, I have a different mask on. It's much more softer for us to wear, especially for vlogging. Um, we can be in it for longer you know, periods of time. And um, that's the, the number one concern that we have is to make sure that when we're out here, we're keeping ourselves safe. So if you notice that inside the car, Officer Delva, she's also wearing her mask as well. Now, she's a PIO. You know, I'm in social media, we work together, but we do different things. So tell the viewers out there, you know, what is your primary role? So I'm a public information officer and our duties include facilitating all media related interviews. We facilitate press conferences for the chief and we also disseminate pertinent information to the media. We also respond to different call outs or says shootings, kidnappings, and other things of media interest. All right, so we're here at the South Station right now. Ready to go meet with the commander? Let's do it. <laughs> Commander, what's going on? Hi, how are you? Good, good. I love the ride. Watch Thank out. You. Thank you. Welcome to the South Bend. Hi, 
everyone, it's Commander Wesleyan Lewis Francois of the Coconut Grove Net. Some are wondering what are the responsibilities of a commander? Well, a commander is responsible for the overall daily functions of a community, which I have Coconut Grove. Coconut Grove is a diverse community that we ensure that we're providing the proper resources it needs on a daily basis. Everything from traffic control, community engagement, and ensuring that we're addressing all the incidents in the neighborhood. All right, so since we don't have the mask on, if you know, we actually do have to keep our, our distance. So, Commander, I know that the community relations section is very active in helping the seniors. They're going out there and trying to shop for them, for those that actually can't get to the supermarket. Officer Guerra and about a dozen other policemen and women walked through the aisles of a Winn-Dixie in Liberty City with a list in hand. They bought rolls of paper towels, bleach, chicken and other items they say a group of seniors from a nearby senior living facility asked for because they couldn't get it themselves. I don't know what's going on in the Grove. I haven't been there in a while. Are you guys doing anything like that? Yes, um, the community relations department is doing such a great thing to making sure that they help the seniors that can't get to the stores. But in our net as well, we're making sure that we're checking on them and giving them a little bit more of a personal touch. Seeing the officers that they're used to seeing on a daily basis and know that we're still here and we still do care about them during this pandemic. All right, Commander, so Delva and I, we're going to head out to the Grove. Uh, I'll catch up with you out there. All right, can't wait to see you guys. All right, see you later. earlier as part of being a commander is making sure that we're bridging the gap between our community and especially here in our business district in Coconut Grove. So here at Fireman Derrick you see how everyone is practicing social distancing. They have the tape on the floor to make sure that everyone stays six feet apart and then we're also making sure that we're checking on our business owners. Even though some businesses are closed but a lot of our businesses are still open and while they're open we want to make sure that they are adhering to the guidelines, that they don't have any issues with any customers and then overall that if any concerns that they have we can immediately address them. We actually stopped by Fireman Derricks and we're going to speak to one of the employees here, Eve. She's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the precautionary measures that she has incorporated during COVID-19. No one comes in anymore. We put the tape on the floor to separate everybody from the six feet and the customers. I've been very stern with everyone who does come and I call them out if I see it they're not doing it because it's our safety also. And hence we've installed this glass, this plexiglass so we can stay behind with the hand things over. Um, I change gloves every time, every every transaction, gloves are changed and they're all right here and I have cases behind me, plenty of supplies, change, nothing touches my hands. Um, we disinfect ev after every transaction. So with all this going on, we're still trying to embrace some kind of normality when it comes to the businesses and getting the food out to the people. You know, the officers are working very, very much with the community to try to bring a lot of peace and calmness through this entire situation. But before we go, I need to go ahead and get myself a piece of the pie. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing like a little Oreo cheesecake to start your day. What we do on a continuous basis during um, our patrol duties and myself and my neighborhood resource officers and my beat officers, we go by the parks to make sure everybody are following the guidelines. The parks are to be completely empty, no exercising in the park, no loitering in the park, no congregating in the park. So when we do and we find someone, we just quickly remind them that the parks are closed and they're not to be here and make sure they get out the park safely. So as the commander stated, we are out here in the park making sure that everyone is complying with all of the guidelines. Um, we have both of our neighborhood resource officers of Coconut Grove that are about to engage. 
So as you all can see, we are going to continue to practice social distancing. If you take a look at both of these officers, they have their distance. They're maintaining their distances between each other as well as the young lady. So it definitely is, you know, a little bit sad and unfortunate to have to come out here and do these type of things. I know it's not enjoyable, you know, for us. You know, we just, you know, want to get through this, you know, pandemic as quick as possible so we can have Absolutely. everything back to normal and, you know, see these parks filled with people playing and having a good time again. Absolutely. So as you all can see, many of the businesses and different establishments and even parks are closed due to the pandemic that we're all going through with this COVID-19. Most importantly, we just wanted to stop by different residents' home and, and make contact with our community to ensure that they're complying with all of our guidelines and rules and regulations that we've set into place during this state of emergency. Uh, most importantly, we also want to ensure them that we will all get through this together. So I love the fact that the commander and the NROs get out there, you know, boots to ground, making sure that everyone's okay because not everyone has access to cell phones, so people cannot afford a cell phone. So door to door, you know, is sometimes the best thing to do during a crisis like this, just to make sure everyone is okay. Yeah, yeah, they came and they, they brought me some flowers. They think I have the one there because oh, nice. I got another one in my head. Uh -huh. And they took a list to bring us. Oh, good, you know, good. some some toilet tissue and some things that I needed. Yeah, you know, awesome. eggs, bread. Thank God. Oh, very yeah, good. Very yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Real nice visit. Yes, we did. So, despite this crisis, a lot of good things happening in the Grove to make sure everybody is safe and trying to just you know get through this together. You know, with peace of mind and smoothly. So, Commander, we'll definitely be back. I gotta take care of some other things. Head over to Alapata, and I'll see you soon. All right, guys. Thank you for stopping by. We'll see you guys next time. Now, if you guys remember, the first, first, first vlog I ever did, I was a beat officer in Coconut Grove, and I went to support the Mahdi. So I haven't been here in a long time. I just want to check on the owners, make sure everything's okay with them, and see what's going on. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Stopping by to say hello, see how everything's doing. Hi, everything is good. Thank you for your support. Officers, we do take our lunch breaks. We do want to eat, but we want to make sure that we are supporting the local businesses as well. And we want to make sure that when we are getting our food that is coming from places that are practicing the social distancing and that they're also using the necessary precautions, you know, to keep everything safe and healthy. So I want to thank all the business owners out there, just like Supporter the Mahdi, who are wearing your gloves and your mask and you're sanitizing and doing everything that you're supposed to be doing during this time so that everybody can be safe. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to get my food and take my lunch break. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Angel, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? I heard over the radio you had an accident. Well, yeah, uh, this is uh, so far the second call we have had uh, this afternoon uh, since I've been on shift at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All right, all right. It's like 5 o'clock right now. Yeah, it's kind of slow. All right. All right, so, you know, I'm here with Officer Delva, so I'm just going to be uh, following you for a little bit, okay? Okay, no problem. All right, brother. I'll see you. Okay. He was sleeping inside the vehicle. Okay. Um, I had to bang on the door. We had to like bang on the car just to make sure he wakes up. He woke up. He's been acting like he's gonna fall asleep. I don't smell any alcohol. I don't know if he took a Xanax or whatever, but he keeps going in and out. He looks like he's about to fall and pass out. He keeps giving me a wrong address. Okay. Uh, he said I'm going here, I'm going there. Okay. okay. He's confused in my opinion. Uh, I get him. He can't go home like that. I wouldn't let him go. So 
So as you guys can see, we are at 7th Avenue and 20th Street. Two officers were flagged down in reference to a one vehicle accident. The gentleman right behind me was driving the white SUV and it crashed right into this tree. At this time, it is unknown the circumstances surrounding the accident. We don't know if it's DUI related or if he's under an influence of some sort of alcohol or drug. But the officers are going to generate the report and fire rescue is going to transport him to the hospital as a precautionary measure. Alright guys, so it is still an active scene even though he was transported to the hospital. There's a lot of unknowns. We have PSA Williams right now talking to the police officers, transferring over the information because PSAs do not conduct criminal investigations. So obviously now the officers are responsible for generating the proper reports for this incident and then also they have to go ahead and request a record to get this vehicle from this location. Alright guys, so we had a pretty long day out here driving around doing a lot in the community. We're gonna let Officer Williams finish up his paperwork and get this car towed out of here. So, as always, please don't forget to like, comment, sub share, oh. <laughs> subscribe. Wow! So, with that being said, please don't forget to like, like share, and, and subscribe. subscribe. See you later.